I'm a true degree. You might know me from things like India House, Orleans Parish Prison, and Mastodon. Welcome to Crime Stories with Intruder Green. I got it. <laughs> I almost fucked that up, but I said it. I said the right name of the show. Anyway, yeah, we're uh, in episode two of the rebrand or whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're starting to do, you know, I want to focus more on the crime stories because uh, everybody else does uh, interviews and shit. And uh, you got to do something special, you know, like. And what's so special about just talking to some dudes that you know about uh, shit that you pretty much already know about. But uh, if you do it where you got something like a little twist, then uh, it makes it extra special. And I've also thought that like lots of times when we do these interviews and we uh, we start talking about, you know, the actual crime stories, people, it's, 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 it's a weird thing because it's almost like a... I don't know what you want to call it, a tool or a vehicle or something, like a fucking Mad Max car driving through the desert, all right, yeah, fucking tearing it up, blowing up, eating lizards and fucking, yeah, <laughs> doing the thing with the sawed-off shotgun and shit, uh, anyway, that's, that's, that's just me going into my fantasy world and whatnot, uh, I don't know why my fantasy is exactly uh mad max movies but it sounds like good time it actually sounds like a terrible time especially for a guy wearing a ski mask because it's all hot and shit but uh i would still do it i would i mean those movies are cool uh mel Mel gibson kind of sucks as a person apparently but you know that that new one uh it's not so new now but uh fury road or whatever that was real good and i guess uh making a new one that's like uh focusing on furiosa whatever uh, so it's probably gonna be good, you know. It's just fun. It's uh, it's 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 weird that they make like uh, some sort of fucking crazy dystopian future uh, where everything is in ruins. Uh, fun, <laughs> but it is. So uh, anyway, we got that going for us, which is good because uh, there's a lot of shit going on these days that ain't so fun either. But you know, I don't need to get into that. You know, it's in the news. Maybe you've been uh, hit by it personally, whether it's disease or violence or uh, what the fuck ever. Uh, it's, it's, it's happening, but that's not why we're here. We're here to talk to Band-Aid Brigade. Uh, they were the ones that I, you know, it's uh, the buddies of ours uh, for a long time. And uh, well, we get into like the whole kind of history of the band. They kind of like started doing a thing and then uh, COVID hit. So it kind of put everything on hold, but they're back in it. Uh, I got to catch up with them because they were playing uh, nearby where I'm hiding out and uh, caught up with them and uh, got to actually do an in-person interview, which don't happen very much anymore. But uh, it's really cool what it does because I don't know, it, you, you'll probably hear it. You know, in the difference between doing that and like a, a whatever you do, Zoom or Skype or whatever, it's weird. I feel like nobody talks about Skype no more, even though like back in the day, that was like the number one, a number one. All right. Like uh, fucking the guys to go to for like video chats and whatnot. But then, like, Zoom just blew up during the pandemic. And uh, that's like the only thing people use now, which whatever i guess they did a better job so you know fuck them but uh yeah i got to catch up with those guys uh they played a show and it was real good uh they were opening for skinny lista i think that's the name of that band yeah i didn't fuck the fuck up the the words on it i think that's right i would love to get to know them too but you know we'll see if that happens uh but yeah uh we also got a uh I don't know what you want to call it, like a, a callback uh, from uh, the last caller on the last episode, uh, Hedda Royston. So if you didn't hear that last episode, you should probably go back and listen to it because you won't understand this call at all. But uh, anyway, let's go to the phones. Hey, Green, it's Heather Royston again. Um, just wanted to clarify on that and water bottles at a cop at no effects uh, story. There really isn't much of a story. It was just a bunch of us being kids. I think we were all 16, 17. Saw a cop. He was actually filming the crowd. So this was uh, Warp Tour 2000 this many years later. Um, I think he was just legit filming the show for the 
for Warp Tour, and now I feel really terrible about it. But, um, you know, we were just a bunch of angry kids. We were all hot and thirsty. None of us thought to bring any money, so we were dying. And saw a cop. I chucked a water bottle at him for some reason. I think I just wanted to impress the boy I was with. And then everyone around us started doing it. Not everybody hit the guy. I think maybe two half-empty bottles bounced off him. Uh, he took it like a champ. Good for him. I hope he's in good places now. Not one of the shitty cops. But, uh, yeah, there's not much of a story to that. But I'm sure I could think of other things that are way cooler stories that I've seen or done to share with you eventually. Um, but I thought I'd call back and give you that story and say hi and uh, loving the show. And uh, hopefully you'll be back stateside soon. Oh, yeah, Heather. That's uh, that's real good that you uh, caused, uh, caused some mishappenings. I mean, you didn't really say much more about the story. I guess you said there is no real story. But, like, you know, it, it sounds like uh, it was a hot day and everybody was feeling a little ridiculous. And you kind of had to let everybody know you were feeling real r- ridiculous. And that's kind of what punk rock's all about sometimes. I mean, all the time, really. Like, get fucking ridiculous because the world is a ridiculous place. And uh, why wouldn't you? Uh, and luckily, it didn't uh, turn out, <laughs> you know, the, the cop apparently was okay with it and uh, didn't fucking, you know, start beating the shit out of somebody. Uh, which, you know, if that happened nowadays, who knows what? Who knows? Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm glad that uh it was all it all went okay for yous. And uh yeah, uh thank you for calling in. I, I appreciate that. I, I appreciate everybody who calls in. I wish you guys would do it more often because it's a lot more fun to like put you on the spot and uh listen to your crime stories than all these big time rock stars that I always have on a show, you know, because they are like, oh yeah. Uh, my crime story is like, uh, this guy tried to sell me a watch and I thought it was a Gucci, but it was only, uh, I don't know, Timex or something. I don't know what like expensive watches are. I just fucking, uh, you know, I steal them. I steal plastic ones, allegedly. So, uh, you know, it's like, they're just easier to get. That's the thing. I don't know. I know I could get more money for the expensive ones, but it's like. They're just harder to do. If you want to watch, you just go get one, right? Like that's, you know, you want to steal an expensive watch. Like why? It's just going to break or you're going to lose it anyway. So uh, why? Why bother? Anyway, I don't, I don't know. Some people are into watches. I'm not uh, because, you know, everybody's got a fucking watch on their phone or whatever these days. And uh, if you don't, then you probably don't give a shit about what time it is anyway. All right. I want to give a shout out to the producer of the podcast. We got Luke Ellis. Uh, sorry, I'm doing bad at this. We got Luke Ellis, Heather Royston, Gem City, Sabrina, Sarah Koenig, Audacity Crash Clothing, Chelsea McNally, Cardboard Box Colony, Carlos Hernandez, and Fast Eddie Nolton. Thanks, everybody, for hanging in there. Um, I appreciate you, especially, you know, we're coming up on the on the winter time and uh, the holidays or whatnot. Uh, I ate a turkey breast with wrapped in... Uh, well, I wanted to get some bacon, but they don't really do bacon here in uh, Germany. Uh, they they say they do. Like, you could buy bacon at the store, but it's not like bacon that I have ever had in the States. It's, like, real thin, and uh, I don't know. Somehow, they figured out a way to make bacon with, like, less flavor, which fucking sucks. It's terrible. But uh, anyway... I ate some of that uh, with some mashed potatoes because, uh, you know, like uh, I just went back to the States and I saw Red and the the guys and like, you know, everybody's doing OK, I guess. But uh, sorry, we <laughs> haven't been playing any shows. I don't know. Maybe we'll do some shows soon. But uh, just, you know, keep 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 hanging in there. It'll probably happen someday as soon as uh, Riot Fest gets a hold of us to like fucking figure our shit out and get back together. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, I. I because of that, I couldn't go and like be with them, you know, during Thanksgiving. So I was just here, and uh, it was good though. Like I ate some, ate some good food, uh, and some wine. Yeah, I fucking I went to the U.S. and uh, yeah, you know the thing about the U.S. they got a lot of good booze there. Uh, not so much here in Germany. Uh, 
well, they got good booze here, but like they got better beer in in the U.S. I feel like there's a weird thing where people are like, oh yeah, Germans got great beer, and I'm like, they got one flavor really. They got a few different flavors actually, but like there's one good flavor. And it's the Pilsners and uh, the Lager. Like, I don't know what the difference is, but like, it's basically, it's very similar. And uh, yeah, but if you go to America, you get all this fuck crazy ass uh, double, triple IPAs and fucking Imperial Stouts and shit. And that's fucking delicious. I think it's real fucked up. So I had a good time. And then I came back here and I stopped drinking for like a while. But, uh, you know, yeah, just for a while, I, I they. Get my body a break and stuff, you know. Old Green ain't as, uh, you know, tough and limber like he used to be. I still got to fucking uh, keep those joints nice and tender for those uh, high kicks and whatnot. You know, I'm practicing that shit even if I ain't playing it out. Anyway. If you do feel the need to call me, which you very much should, you can hit me up. At plus one six zero eight five three five nine six zero eight, um, yeah, you know, fucking, you don't have to worry about like having to actually talk to me either. If I see your number show up, I'm gonna be like, I ain't answering that. I don't know who that is. And then you can fucking leave a voicemail, and I'll play it on the show, and it gives me something extra to talk about because, yeah, you know, like it's just fun to like talk to you guys and like hear what you want to say. I'm also trying to figure out my studio here. There ain't no heat. And I got like this radiator. It's like a electric radiator. You plug it in and it radiates heat. Like a space heater, but a radiated style. You know? Like it's supposed to be better than the ones that blow, just blow hot air on you. And it's like not even that hot because the cold air doesn't get heated up that much when it's just going through some heat coils or whatever. Uh, so that's my studio. It's also quieter, you know, like if you fucking trying to record some audio and you got a bunch of fucking shit blowing, that's going to create some bad fucking room noise. Not like this wonderful room noise you got going on right now. Hey, oh, all right. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, I'm with the show. Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from Intruder Green. An inmate at Federal Correctional Institution. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. To accept charges, press 1. We got Band Aid Brigade with on the Intruder Green uh, podcast. It's not called it anymore though. I, I rebranded it. It's, it's going to be new now. We got Zach and Brian. How you guys doing? Doing great. Doing, doing yeah, well. that's hey, great. Green. How long have you lived over here, Green? Oh, I've been here for a while. You know, like hiding out. Uh, I, can, I can hear I the German like, accent now. Yeah, you can hear that. Yeah, I'm yeah, working yeah. on it. You know, uh-huh. I'm not necessarily learning any of the words, but I feel like if I just get the accent down, people think I'm a native or something. That's right. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I that's think right. that's true. I walked around Brazil for like uh, four weeks, only knowing how to say pineapple. I can but hear everybody it. knew. Yeah, you yeah. can hear it still. Absolutely. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> I mean, what else do you need to say in Brazil? Pineapple's delicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I also learned I'm sorry, but I forgot it halfway through. Yeah, hey, you know, I guess... Because uh, I'm not, man. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's why you forgot it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Subliminal messages, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's the wrong thing, but it's kind of like that, whatever. Uh, but you guys have been on tour forever here, as you said earlier, like four weeks or some shit. Four? Four? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's coming on five now. Coming on five. Yeah. All right. I don't know. I have no idea when this is going to be out, so we could tell people it's been like six or whatever, How lo- however long you're going to be over here. Uh, but we're in Dresden. Mm-hmm. You guys are about to go rock the house uh, with Band-Aid Brigade. You know, like, uh, you know, pardon my uh, French or whatever, but like, I feel like a lot of people might know Zach from Piers. Um, and we've had you guys on before. Yes. 
Uh, but this is, how long, you, I think we recapped earlier and you said that you came out with the first Band-Aid Brigade album like right before the pandemic, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right before. 20, 20, January 2020. Yeah, great Impeccable timing. timing. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Uh, so that worked out obviously really good. Yeah, it um, sure did. And now you guys already have another album out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, excellent. Uh, uh, you, you know, because two years sitting around, you end up writing some songs. That's a good thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, you should. Because yeah. yeah. you can't play no shows. You can't play no songs. Right. You might as well write some songs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In time of peace, prepare for war. That's what uh, a famous uh, politician once said, I think. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Well, as you guys know, the main uh, theme of my show is crime stories. Yeah. And uh, I like to get right into it. Uh, if you've got any that you want to talk about. I know it's a hard topic to get into sometimes because you're like, well, I know some things, but some people might not know I know some things. So I don't know if I should say some things like the police, for instance. Right. Probably yeah. don't want to hear you say some stuff that you could say. Uh, so feel free to, uh, you know change the names and faces to protect the impotent or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That'll take uh, some planning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I have a bunch of things that I can't talk about, but one thing that I could talk about is Murder Mart. Oh, oh yeah. shit. Yeah. This been, sounds like uh, some, you've been there. I'm some heavy sure. stuff. Um, no, I live across the street from, uh, uh, from a, 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 a liquor store, Colope. How do you say that word? Colloquial? Collo- that sounds right. Colloquial. You try it, Green. <laughs> Colloquial. Yeah, Colloquialoka. Colloquialoka uh, called sounds Murder like a nice Mart. Place. All right. Um, and I have uh, witnessed many, many uh, uh, violent crime in front of that place. Holy I'm shit. Right across the street. So wait, is nickname Murder Mart or it's actually called that? It doesn't say that on the on the building. Okay, I was gonna say because either that's great branding or they're just asking for it. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Uh, no, no, uh, it's not. It's not called that, but everybody calls it that because every time you go there, it's really sort of like, I, am I gonna come back? <laughs> Let's he, see. He, yeah, I mean, he'll go, dude. He'll walk a mile to get cigarettes versus go to the place that you could like throw a baseball out. Oh yeah. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. And so it's it's the question is usually how bad do you want a beer? Right. Yeah, I get that. Uh huh. I think uh, you well you're talking about New Orleans, right? Yeah. Yeah. I I know that uh, I don't know you know New Orleans that well, but I I did spend a little time in there way back in the day, probably like early 2000s, mm-hmm. uh, just hanging out, having a good time, doing crimes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Not violent crimes, you know, we, we don't do that stuff, just victimless crimes. Yeah, but I sure. do remember somebody saying, I think I was up around Canal Street, mm-hmm. and that's like a major street, but everybody was like, don't go over there. That's the that's that's bad stuff happening oh, yeah. over there. Well, and I was like, well, there's a market over there. I kind of want to go get some stuff. And they're like, yeah, don't go over there. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so it's a, it's a it's probably that's that's one of the worst uh, touristy spots. The worst places sure. that like travelers that yeah, are coming yeah. through and want to see like the French Quarter and shit. Yeah, yeah. It get, it does get kind of gnarly there. Sure. But I live in like a fucking sort of backyard fucking neighborhood that oh, is yeah. like. You live pretty, in somebody's backyard. Yeah. Pretty That's a good early. place to hide out. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, well, if you think about it, every, everything in somebody's backyard. That's true. Not to get heavy. You're That's, getting like religious here. I know. It's I, like I, God's I don't backyard. Do I don't, yeah, oh, right. That's, they're one time, romantic. <clears throat> one time at his house, uh, I was sleeping there when we were doing the record, or this last one. And oh, this a is bunch good. of yeah. bunch of gun gunfire like right outside. Just and his dad's like. Hey, Brian, like five minutes goes by. He goes, hey, Brian, did you hear that? I'm all the gunfire. He's like, no. What came after? I'm like, nothing. He's all, exactly. <laughs> no cops, nothing. Jeez. Pure chaos. The cops are busy fucking lining their pockets with uh, people's money. Uh, the, yeah, murder mark. Well, how do they do that? I uh, need a tip. Well, I mean, like, on, on a very, very... Uh, on a very basic, uh, like uh, uh, in a very literal way, yeah. they every time New Orleans police arrest somebody, they steal all your money. Oh. That's like a, that's like an understood like thing. Like yeah. you're not getting your fucking money back. Yeah. Often you won't get like you know uh, other possessions back. Like they'll be like, that's not logged here. We don't have that. Oh yeah. Uh, 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 but um, 
Yeah, I don't know. The whole the whole mm-hmm. system there is pretty fucking. You know. Sure. Nothing. We it's committed shit. a series of crimes here in Germany on this tour. Oh yeah. Yeah. We. Uh, so it's pretty easy to do. It is. They got a lot oh, of laws. It's really easy to so, do. Do you want to tell the story? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. You know, You're almost gone, right? In the States. <laughs> yeah, there. we have three days left, and it's a it, holiday it's weekend. Fine. We'll be That's fine. That's true. Uh, but, you know, you can't you can't get gas in the States before you pay for it, right? Oh, yeah. Well, at least in California. No, uh, you can't. I mean, in some places, I think you can pump it and then pay. But anyways, yeah, yeah. here, With a car, so. so our tour manager, Yatsik, uh, him and I had a misunderstanding of who was paying for the gas. Oh, no, shit. <laughs> so after uh, yeah. about a two-hour drive after a fill-up, I'm like, you paid for the gas, right? He's all, no, I thought you did. I'm like, I didn't pay for the gas. So I'm thinking already like, okay, we're gonna, this is bad. We're gonna get stopped going and, and all. And then I start to think back to all the other times we got gas and he thought I was paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> so just to be- Sounds like a good uh, good And I'd love to know what you would've done in this situation. I so he, he went back yeah. oh. and he paid the 35 euro at that one station just oh. to show, hey, we're good people. But because yeah. you know they got the fucking plates on camera. Yeah, yeah that's like true. It's, it's, it's that's it's, true. Fucked. It could come back to haunt you, mm-hmm. uh, which is why you should cover those plates up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. See, Hindsight. Uh you know, it's like uh, you really gonna feel about stealing gas. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. who's getting fucked over here? Uh, right. Nobody that I give a shit about. Yeah, okay. that's the thing. <laughs> that's why it's a victimless crime. That is, yes, that is that is by definition a victimless crime. I gotta say. Uh, it's a good idea, if you can get away with it, to steal a bunch of fucking gas, uh, yeah. Especially in Europe, I mean, if you were in Germany, most of that shit's coming from Russia. Well, it was coming from Russia. Not to get political or whatnot here. Mm-hmm. But, uh, anyway. Yeah, those are good crime stories. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, they're a little bit self-incriminating, but I think you protected, no, uh, we did more we enough had... protection there that, the, 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 you got, you can get away with it. Well, or at least your, your tour manager... I don't know if he's a tour manager or just a driver, but he's like taking care of business yeah. by doing that. I yeah. mean, if I was tour manager in a band, I would probably try to do that, do the right thing, or at least tell him I did and then like pocket the money. Yeah, yeah. that's you know? what I think he did. Oh, well yeah. then, you know. <laughs> it was quite possible. Good for him, you know, that's real good. Right, yeah. I, I think so too. Yeah, I'm sure you would because it's your money. Yeah. I, 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 uh, so, but another, another, well, all right. Uh, I have watched a shootout. Oh, shit. Out of my window, right? Wow. And, and I'm watching this guy just unload fucking, ka, 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 ka. Yeah. And I'm watching out my window, and then, and he's kind of pointing away from me. Yeah. And then I hear return fire. And I'm oh, like, yeah. no. That's when you gotta get no. the fuck away. Get down. Yeah, get down. yeah. And then I see a fucking, as I'm peeking over the windowsill, I see an SUV pull out of the grocery uh, store parking lot, yeah. like peel the fuck out, yeah. and they got fucking cans of corn falling out of the back, and okay. like fucking pallets of like food, yeah. and they just pull away. And then I watched cans of corn get rolled over for the next fucking hour. It was really, that was pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, but uh, that was the best part. Yeah, that was the best part. And then there was another time I was supposed to go to band practice, but I couldn't because my car was parked in front and it was a crime scene. So I wasn't allowed to leave until oh, I finished shit. like doing the crime scene shit. Mm. Yeah. Oh, mm. Murder mark, baby. That's when you yell at him like, hey, cops, you're really fucking up my day here. I got to get the band practice. It's way more important than this bullshit. Holy shit, I got a good one. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. One time I was, I, I had passed out in the middle of the street. I think I'm, I'm, I was probably 21, 22. Passed out in the middle of the street, somebody stole all my shit. Somebody stole my wallet, somebody stole my phone, blah, blah, blah. Wow, uh, and they tried to give it back. because there's. What? Then they tried to give it back. Because they felt bad? No, they put a couple bucks in there. And they <laughs> yeah, yeah, they felt guilty. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. guy's in bad shape. No, <laughs> so I don't have any fucking anything. Yeah. And, uh, and I, so I get in a cab. <laughs> it's like, okay. I'm, I'm shit housed, you know? Yeah, I'm just like, yeah. ah. And I kind of pass out in the cab. <laughs> and I wake up, and we're in front of my house, and he's yelling at me to get out and to pay him. And yeah. I was like, ah, I don't have any money. And, I don't know. and like, so I'm just kind of just being drunk in the back of his car, not even trying to get out and go into my house or whatever. <laughs> He calls the police, yeah. the cops show up, and then I react very poorly to that. Oh. And like, so I, I hear this story because I live with Meemaw, you know? 
And I hear yeah. her side of the story. She hears yelling and screaming. Mima is French for uh, mama, right? Yeah, yeah. Or like it's French for my lady. girl. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, so she she tells me her side of the story. She comes to the window and she sees me like drunk, just going, "Fuck you, pig! I'm not fucking doing anything wrong. Fuck off! This is my house. I live here." Or like whatever. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then everybody's yelling at me. I remember this feeling, right? Everybody yelling at me and I just went, shh, stop, wait, wait a second. And I just walked over to my door, unlocked the door, went inside, locked the door, went upstairs and went, shh, don't say anything. And she was like, do we have to pay the cab? And I was like, shh, shh. And then they just left. Cause the, I was more of an annoyance yeah. than anything else in that situation. And that, I was, thought you were gonna... that was Mardi Gras 2012 oh, yeah. I'm or sure they gotta... shit like that. You know, I'm not a huge fan of cops, but I have to say, they did kind of a good job there <laughs> by just not fucking with you. <laughs> I, I do appreciate that bit. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, you, you don't hear many the... stories like that, actually. Well, well, maybe you do, but uh, they're overshadowed by other shitty stories. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. That's good. I yeah. like it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel bad for that cab driver, though. I should have paid he did me a good service. He took care of me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you should pay cab drivers in general. Yeah. Because they're, you know, they're doing a... Sh they're working. They're I don't working know if it's people. a shitty job, but it's a, working people. it's a definitely is a job. So if you're out there listening to this... Pay that I'm cab so driver sorry, on man. Zach's behalf. I, I'm so sorry, buddy. I, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I would have paid you. I just didn't have my wallet, and I was very confused yeah. when I woke up. Yeah. I was thinking you were saying if you're like addressing the audience in general, like, because anybody else could go find that cab driver and pay him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's probably still working. You know what? Pay your cab driver. There you go. That's a good, I, I mean, that's. In I, fact, everybody give your cab driver an extra tip on Zach's behalf. Yes. For that one that he missed. I, because of that incident, I, I have like a memento style, pay your cab driver tattooed on my chest backwards. There you go. So when I get up in the morning and I see it in the mirror, pay you don't cab forget. Driver. That's yes. right. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Anything else? Talk about, Brian, tell the story about the guy that went out in the middle of the street in the middle of the night. Oh, that was an That's a fucking cool. I don't know if that was a crime. I guess it had that's to be. That's definitely a crime. Well, firing, well, <laughs> you made a motion like he was firing a gun, so I guess yeah, that's a crime if you're in a yeah. city. Well, in yeah. California? In oh, California. The, so yeah. we, uh... We were all doing something. We were recording in San Diego. And yeah. the one night, we were there for like two weeks staying at my house. I wasn't there um, when this happened, by the way. Yeah, neither was I. Oh. You, oh. No, we were both at Oh, the we studio. were somewhere. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so, so we go to the to this studio, and, and we had to be there like for a couple days, so we just got a hotel kind of down in San Diego. But my roommate sends me a video, and he's like, hey, check out what you missed. And it's just a video of uh, from like a night cam, huh? Like from a a, from cam? our security camera out front, and the guy across the street just walked out in the middle of the night <laughs> with an AK-47 oh, and jeepers. just fired it in the air for like five minutes, and then just walked back <laughs> into his house. <laughs> and I'm all, damn, dude. Was it not? It wasn't even a holiday or anything. No, it was yeah. just like a Saturday night. <laughs> I was just blowing off some steam. <laughs> like, had an argument. It was yeah, like, yeah. Ah, yeah, is that our landlord? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's, that's yeah, cool. that's good. I was gonna say like, you guys come from some pretty crime-ridden places. Like everybody knows New Orleans and like Southern California have those. Uh, uh, what do you call it uh, when you're known for something? Uh, what do you reputation? Call it? Yes, there that's you go. right. That's it. And uh, but then I was like, what? Well, then there's also Detroit, mm -hmm. and Chicago, and B -more? like B more, B more. Yeah, probably. And uh, Saint Louis? even even Minneapolis, I think, was known for like the capital of violent crimes for a while. Maybe for a while. Yeah. And I'm like, man, America's got plenty of fucking uh, fucked up crimes going on. Yeah. Yeah. Not even like the crazy ones you hear about in the news, like mass shootings and stuff, but just like crime crime, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. What was it? You got you you came originally from New Orleans. Yeah, and yeah. Dealt with all that. Yeah. Your whole life. Yeah, yeah. I've made friends with the 
when I was 16, I loved this story. I made friends with the, this, this girl that used to stand out on the street topless and swallow a snake head first and then oh. pull it back up. Oh, that's some voodoo shit. Yeah, something. well, maybe, or whatever. Yeah, I, I don't she know, was, it sounds she was, crazy. She was making tips. Oh, yeah. You know? Um, she was also a hooker. But we, All we, right. But, but look, so, so we, 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 I become friends with her and we just, she let me play guitar next <laughs> to her on the street for tips. Yeah. And nobody was tipping me. I was oh, terrible. Oh, yeah, of course I was not. Terrible. You don't want to play next to her. You want to go it, somewhere it, else. The tips are for the titties, you know? Yeah. That's what it is. Sure. And so she, but she was so fucking sweet to me and let me fucking play next to her and yeah, shit. Yeah, at least and, you got to hang out. Yeah, well, you might not I, make any money, but you know. Made friends. That's made right. Friends. Which I mean, is way I, more valuable. I was friends with the clown and I was oh. friends with the. Uh, uh, where's John? I don't know where John is. John Snodgrass. Even John, even, if you're listening to this, you're supposed to be on stage right now. Oh, I didn't six know weeks Snodgrass ago. was with you guys. Oh yeah, you yeah. said he was drinking your vodka, and I was like, oh, he just came to visit you on tour to and drink, drink, vodka. drink your <laughs> vodka. He's every probably night. out committing a crime right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. right. Well, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's it like being the only criminal element out here, Green? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. What do you mean out here? Like in Germany yeah. in general? Here, yeah. Uh, yeah, because people are pretty well behaved, aren't yeah. they? I mean, yeah. yeah. You go up to check out at the hotel, they're like, so did you take anything out of the room or did you have breakfast? No. No, not at all. It's like, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's such an honor system. Uh, I will say it's pretty easy, but it's also like, I don't know. It's less scary than in the States. For sure. It's like, I feel like half the cops don't even have guns. Yeah, yeah. So it's like... Uh, that's probably not true, but it just feels that way. Right. And uh, so it's like, yeah, I don't give a shit. It's kind of nice. That's kind of part of why I came here. It's You're like, the king. Yeah. <laughs> the fucking king. Green's king of the, the German castle. I guess that makes me uh, a Kaiser or a Fuhrer or something. A Fuhrer. Um, <laughs> Well, you know what? You will always be mine, Fuhrer. Oh, okay. shit. Yeah, that's right. That's German. Oh, Zach's learning real good. But, Brian, did you grow up in California, or are you just living there now? Um, I, yeah, grew up in San Diego. Oh, and that's living, a nice Living place. there now. I did live in... A, I know they got crime there, but it's still... Well, I lived They also a, got Kalimas there. Uh, yeah, I, I know. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> Good shit. Uh, but I lived in New York for, for some time. For uh, We were just talking about that for school. So I, I, I got exposed to a little bit of crime. But oh, then yeah. I, went, I went right back to Carlsbad. And, oh, yeah. I really wanted The crime to there is like when economic. Was, and, when I was younger, oh, sure. I, I thought about becoming a criminal. You know, I really kind of wanted to do that. And then I kind of just fell off. And I, I think it's something that I... There's I, always I, I wanna, time. Yeah. I yeah. might want to revisit that and like give it another shot. Yeah. You did sneak under the, the, the toilet thing. She caught me. You got caught already. We've been committing crimes this whole time. You know you have to pay for the... Oh, the yeah. Money. You got caught doing it? Yeah. Uh, he did it right in front of her. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, she just kept saying, hello, hello. <laughs> and at first I was just like, yeah. hello, and kept walking into the bathroom. But it was like, she's not going to stop. She's nope. going to hello me all the way to the urinal. Yeah. I got to just pay her. Yeah. And, and they works too, because you think you're going to be all sneaky and go take a poop. <laughs> but then you got this lady yelling at you hello the whole time and you're like, I got stage fright, I can't poop. All I can hear is this lady who knows I'm in here, she's gonna be listening to my thoughts and stuff. She keeps saying hi. It just won't hello. come out. That's the trick. That's how they get you. That's how they make you pay. It's actually like a mob thing, because they're like, oh, you know, it's like protection money. It's uh -huh, like, uh -huh. you gotta fucking pay up, or well, you we gotta, gotta deal with somebody helloing you. you the whole time. <laughs> and it ain't gonna be fun for you, buddy. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we should report a missing person of so John Snodgrass. Oh they're shit! All, I can see they're all looking for. Him. <laughs> John was supposed to be on stage, and he's not. John Snodgrass. Also, I wanted to say this earlier. John Snodgrass managed to, without even being here, interrupt this podcast. Uh, yeah, he's a guy. I'm he's got a. He's, with he's a magician. <laughs> I am he impressed. has a skill. That he is. is owned. He is amazing. Yeah. He is very good at that. And <laughs> probably all the things too. But yeah, yeah, you really can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, John's great. I was I wouldn't I had no idea it was with you guys. Yeah. But yeah. uh apparently he's not. So no, yeah, <laughs> yeah, not, not. he's a missing person. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I can't wait to see what the picture on the missing persons poster is gonna be of John. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's gonna be a bright eyed and bushy tailed. Hey man! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, hey, coolest man. dude in the room. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. yeah. Oh, I miss him so much. 
Oh, maybe uh, you'll see him today. Maybe not. I yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I miss him now that he's missing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, it was good talking to you guys. Uh, what You guys uh, doing this tour and then, uh, well, Zach's not staying in Europe no more because the past tour got canceled. Yeah. Any plans for the future? Other um, than that? Other than this, I mean, like, really, uh, we don't have so many things in the works as of yet. Um, there will be plenty of traveling and touring on this record that we just put out. So I really, I guess that's the thing that I would boost is go listen to our new record. It's called Sex is Terrifying. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, we are Band-Aid Brigade. I want to get, I'm sure you guys have vinyl, right? We have not vinyl of our, one, not our yet, first record. Yeah. But, but it will yeah. be available. Yes. Yes. I mean, obviously that's the way I prefer to listen to music, but mm -hmm. I like, do you guys have, I, this is just a general question about your taste. Do you got a way that you like to listen to music digitally? A preferred way? To listen to it digitally? Yeah, because I know what I do. Oh, I like what service? You yeah, mean? yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. YouTube Premium. Oh, YouTube Premium. really? Yeah, I don't fuck with Spotify or okay. any of that shit. Uh, yeah, well, Spotify's just robbing everybody. Yeah, exactly. So it's better not to, uh, but yeah. Bandcamp is cool. Bandcamp is very yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering, because this is like a big question for a lot of people. They're like, you know, all these streaming apps is like not paying people enough. And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, I don't know. Fucking, what is it? The one, the old school one uh, that they started before. SoundCloud? Napster. 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 They pay actually pretty good, but they're... Their, 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 their fucking service is more expensive. The thing, so anyway. is, the thing is, is like if, if they're not going to pay their fucking musicians, you should at least be able to listen to the music for free. Yeah. Uh, and that's why Bandcamp is great. YouTube Premium, it's a pay thing, yeah. but, uh, but it's fucking, it's worth it to me just simply because uh, there's so much, uh, there, there's so many uh, rights loopholes that there are there. Okay. Right? So like it's much more like user based. So like people can upload other people's music or oh, like yeah. music that like who even knows who owns the rights to this. You know? Sure. So there's all kinds of crazy obscure shit on there. And the funny thing about YouTube Premium is it's like all you're really paying for is that the music doesn't turn off when you turn your that screen off on your phone. But also no ads and oh, you can yeah. download shit. Oh yeah. So like that's perfect for like over here. I'll hit Wi-Fi and download a whole bunch of shit. And, yeah, like, you gotta do and, that. Yeah. All that. right. But Bandcamp is also wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, that's just important to me. I like to get to know what people are thinking about it. Because it's a big, you know, it's just a bunch of bullshit. It's like the Wild West or something with the internet these days. It really is. It really yeah. is. Yeah. Well, guys, I guess uh, I'm going to let you get ready for the show. And I'm going to get ready for the show. And let's have a good time. Thanks Fuck for having us. Hell yeah. Thanks, Green. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Put it in, buds. <laughs> Great radio. All right. And that's it for the Intruder Green podcast. You can hit me up on all the socials at Intruder Green or go to intrudergreen.com for all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, the Intruder Green call in line is plus 1608 Patreon.com slash Intruder Green if you want to become a producer of the podcast. The Intruder Green podcast. I keep saying the Intruder Green podcast. It's the fucking. Crime stories with Intruder Green. I'll get it right. I will get it right next time. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. The show is produced by Colin Bennett. Management by Anka Kramer. Hair and makeup by Genevieve Smith. Set design by Darren Raymer. Catering Matthew Hendershot. Lighting Sweet Lights. Rahway, New Jersey. A theme song is Particles by Type Rose. Ooh, leftovers. Whoop.